Hi everyone and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm planning or trying to do roses and I have a beautiful bouquet of orange or carrot color and white roses in a blue vase. Unfortunately you still don't see my setup at the same time because just the way my setup is done it's on the side from me but I'll try to talk and tell what I'm doing so it would be easier so I'm starting from uh, blocking the vase very quickly the vase is dark blue color so I did drawing I didn't do any underpainting today so I just want to get started with it so it's ultramarine blue and um, transparent oxide red using this short brush but try to be loose with it using daylight for now but I know that may get dark so I made artificial light the same cool light start introducing a little bit of white turned into gray <laughs> so try not to do too light I can always do that later but at this point I just need to put the main so that I have light tabletop with the light reflection goes there as well but not too much some light reflection here so my cleanest light blue will go here say I say cleanest I mean the brightest without any additions of brown because the other side added a little bit of brown due to saturation so so I kind of do it very schematically at this point I'll work on it later as well just want to get started with roses rather than spend time on the vase just quickly put highlight area and then I'll work more on this area later maybe add more darks and I'll see how it goes Anyway, this shows just how the basic shape with addition of highlight can get a very good um, grounding. So, sorry, not grounding, but um, kind of getting showing three dimensional. So, I'll just add a little bit more dark here. I don't want to go too dark, but need to correct shape as well a little um, my background is dark as well but it will be duller than the actual vase so, so far I'm doing some reflections so I have some blue kind of white reflection in it so now I need to start I'll do shadow, cast, sh uh, cast shadow on the vase because I have two roses here so the color, the shadow here will be kind of grayish because it's on material that is light so it reflects in the vase so again, I'm only doing it very very loosely and very very thinly at this point leaving space for roses the tabletop will be probably 
this color later again will be done later because there's no rush with this tabletop not going to change a lot for me the main thing I want to do is uh, I just show this because it's kind of how it's going to fall and then the back the tabletop again very loosely because there is a gray cast shadow from my box where I put my painting I'm using soft edges to start from that's where it's finishing but I'm going to do it like very soft at the back as well background so background probably is going to be maybe I'll add some black to it some alizarine some ultramarine but keep it very dull so adding a little bit of brown to make it duller and then to make it very bright so probably how I think I just need to see the color how it will interact with my roses I think it should be fine and I make it even more dull later or I may do it very loose and transparent not sure about this yet but I'll do roses now so I'm taking maybe a little bit more scadium red light here so my roses are very beautiful color it's carrot carrot coral color and the white rose is beautiful too so I'm going to use a transparent sorry not transparent terra rosa transparent red oxide a little bit of viridian into that mixture so that will be my shadows for orange roses I'll call them orange for now because that's what they are to me right now look like orange color but like I said it's more carrot so do this so there's light coming from the left so the dark parts are going to be in the shadow so terra rosa and viridian really work well together for warm cast shadows and then I have cool light as I said so there is one rose at the background that I hardly see but I can schematically do it as you can see I'm doing very schematically with the roses I always have the same problem overworking or just going too much into details so I'm trying to avoid this so I could keep my shape of the rose so this rose at the back hardly seen so I'm going to keep this cast shadow very very dark there are only a few petals falling in the light and rose at the back also but it has some light on it so I used some of um, <laughs> yellow ochre and a little bit of that mixture I made before so I just lightened because it's at the back it's uh, not as saturated as front roses so but it has some light falling on it so I just want to make sure I capture that light before my light changes so it goes here this one petal really really pronounced so I'll add a little bit cut yellow dip and yellow ochre and touch of terra rosa for this one make it more glowing type but not too much glow and my palette is really really warm for roses at this point so I'm using the same color now for this rose this one front petal the 
the rose that goes to the light is very bright so I want to capture this now yeah it's very bright <laughs> but that's what I need and there is shadow here again doing it very schematically just trying to squint and see where the main shadows are I'm painting loosely because if I start going into petals I'll get lost forever <laughs> like in the forest <laughs> so I have to just try to keep color clean for the front rows so I'm squinting and seeing wh what are the brightest ones this uh, cadmium orange is a really good color for these orange roses trying to clean my brush to make sure I use very clean color so I'm adding a tiny bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cut yellow dip to this particular rose so I only decayed some main petals at this point then I'll see what else I will need to do but I just don't want to overwork it trying to get the shape right as well the silhouette of the rose so even though I cover it later more with background just want to make sure while I have light actually I'm going to cover it now with background while it's wet and wet with a little bit of I'll just sh try to keep it soft. I think I got this shape right, so I'm not going to mess with it. Um, yeah, background can be sorted later. So now I'm going to next to the second rose. And again, this one has kind of light falling on this first panel I call it panel because they're like panels of the little shape so I'm trying to not to think about shape that much I mean not to think about it as a rose so while I'm there I'm going to do green viridian so the only green I'm using today is viridian so I'll do this uh, dark green another one and the last one and there are some greens in there again I only give an indication of those greens because there is a stem of that rose going through there so my leaves go on this side so I'm going to actually do this leaf so I will know where the edge of it the end of it so there is some light leaf there not going too much into so there is a little negative shape behind the green actually is very cool on this side so I like how my orange rose glowing how it looks so I really like I think I add a little bit of light into this one just don't want to lose it later Now I'm going to white rose. So I will try this mixture now. So I'm not sure yet myself how I'm going to work with it, but I'll do viridian green and some yellow ochre 
maybe some white so I want to keep it warm for now so this is my first rose white rose so again even though it's white I'm trying to not to lose the shape of it so maybe I'll add a little bit of purple as well here my second rose and I can always go with white later it's not a big problem it's just to get the shape right so in the middle it's really really kind of green yellow so I really have this yellow green color actually that I have in my palette so this is a little lighter white here not as light here. I'm trying to capture now the light. Let's see if it I managed to do that. At this point my white finished. So I'll have to go back. some white in a minute for now this green leaf coming here I'll separate the roses so oh, that's important one I want to keep it there it's also a lot of green dark green at the back of this white it's kind of separating these orange ones from green and that's good because it's going to give more depth so there is a leaf here so if you can see one of the roses will be hardly there there are lots of leaves falling around here and there is one big here I'm going to block those first and then I'll go back to white roses. So this I'm using a uh, very thin and transparent red oxide for greens. So again for leaves I'm also using so there is one leaf that falling on the vase have to make it a little lighter because light falls on it there the light there the leaf goes different way again leaves can wait because I just put shapes of those leaves and nothing else because with leaves it's easy you can they can hang there tomorrow without change but with these leaves or with sorry with petals with the roses themselves it's a little different so I'm carving this leaf around kind of looking at that shape and that's all I'm going to do for now so now to the neck of the vase because I have to paint it now because it looks too white <laughs> rose kind of overlapping with it I want to make sure I do it right here so there's the greens there are some greens falling here so I'm going to change my brush soon but for now I'm working with this um, synthetic brush I hope it will I'll keep going with it until I can. So this rose is interesting shape. It's kind of bud, like a rose bud, but at the same time it's half open on one side, so I'll just block it in. It's still white. <laughs> it's going to be white eventually. 
even the blockhead is gray. Just my white completely finished, so this is the brightest spot. And I'm going to block it with the other thing I have with the other brush. Sorry, no, I'm going to use this brush and I will block it with the the roses I will start going into them with the softer brush because I find it's easier to put paint on top and also just cover around a little bit just a little I can always go back so this is white rose this is this was green maybe I may change a little for some reason my purple overpowering in this mixture. I'm going to change that later as well. So there is one good leaf that I definitely should keep. The things like this one. Because they add they kind of break the greens. Make them look nicer. Two colors finished at this point, so I'm going to quickly add this leaf and indicate that one. That one I probably have to wipe a little because it's light. So one leaf here. Yeah. So I'm going to have to clean my hands, put some paints. Hopefully you can see it clearly this point not too dark yet the days are getting longer the spring is coming soon that's why i got inspired by this roses in the shop and i bought a big bunch of multicolored roses oh. mm -hmm. more viridian so by the way i'll show what viridian i'm using here it is sorry so this is my old rembrandt viridian it's good but i trade other viridians they're all normally fine uh, Viridian is a quite neutral green, I would say. So you can make it cooler, you can make it warmer. I'm going to add more white. Titanium white I'm using normally, just a gray, fast drying titanium white. I use titanium white for flowers and for landscapes. And when I paint pets, I'm trying to use different white. Uh, I'm using Rublev lead white that is transparent. It's a much stickier white, but it does the job. It makes fur on animals really transparent and without making it too heavy. So that's a good thing. So now, going back into roses, I'm going to change my brush soon. Let me do a little bit more background, carve around here. One more paint finished, ultramarine, so I have to get that one quickly as well. Trying to do it loosely, I will sharpen the edge of the vase later and put a thicker paint on it potentially. At this point, keep everything loose and smooth. So my ultramarine again, like the colors I use a lot, I buy big tubes, it's much better value for money. So this is a gambling ultramarine blue. So put a little bit of that. So I could keep going. So this is was a uh, synthetic brush I was working with, uh, just a flat number six. It's rosemary, but any synthetic flat will work perfectly for this job. Just because I'm using a smooth panel, for me it's important to use soft brushes so you end up gliding on this because it doesn't have any grip, but I like it for certain paintings. So now I'm going to use a rosemary uh, Eclipse uh, X Long Comber 
it's a three eighths inch the size so it's it's uh, one of the smallest I have that the size and that's how long it is so I like it for flowers a lot because you have to get used to it you have to make sure you put enough paint on it so you could uh, use it but really works well for flowers so I'm going to make more intense mixture for orange actually because I just noticed that while the light is there I could do that and I think I should do the middle and the back a little darker looking for different edges that I see on the orange roses don't want to overwork them as well Okay, so I'll leave orange roses for now and keep going back to my uh, white roses. So start from this again. Start from here. White roses have lots of green shadows in them. shades and shadows so I don't want to lose those this ones and they're also in different shapes so this one kind of hanging there <laughs> it's half barred the same as the other one I'm using white with a uh, little bit touch of yellow for this rose. Have to keep it a little bit thicker so I could lay paint on top of the other paint. And maybe tomorrow, actually, I'll have to go again. Normally, sometimes paint gets too wet and too much of it so I have to stop and finish it next day but as long as I put all the shapes right today tomorrow will be more kind of re-emphasizing what I already have this is the brightest spot on this rose so I'm using cadmium lemon in my white oh sorry not cadmium cadmium yellow light and I have green in between those roses too so those little I think I'm going to keep this rose for now like this and then I'll see how far I have to go emphasizing the shadow and I'll have to carve green around it so going this way and I'm going this way going to paint completely 
everything in just the light from those petals that kind of looks right and again on the main petals not every single petal I'll leave this white rose. May work on it later again. Maybe do some like purple here. Maybe do a deeper shadow in there. So there is a fact of foreshortening when you look at this rose because it's kind of squashed <laughs> a little bit. So go into the second rose before I lost where it was <laughs> the way it fell. some purple color a bit neutral purple because that's what I see in the reflection of this petal not in reflection but uh, because it's transparent so I can see some purples in it I don't know why obviously from light of the sky that goes through the window and possibly through the vase as well And then I'm going to actually have a tiny bit of um, Naples yellow that I'm mixing with white right now. I'm going over the this petal a little darker here because it's in the shadow. I not forget to clean my brush. Especially with petals, it's easy to get muddy. And I've done it so many times, so I'm trying to be very careful. Sometimes it's easier to leave it if you think you have too much paint on. Just leave it for a short while. Sometimes white paint sets after a while because white paint is the one that you don't want to get contaminated with any other color, especially if you want clean white. Clean white, I mean, it always has something to it, but clean color, clean light color. That's the main ingredient is titanium white. You want to be careful with, have to wipe your brush every time you touch it. Now I will work the ground a little into it. I think that's what I did. My white still not clean, not the way I want it. and not the shape I wanted, so I will keep working on it until I reach what I need. So I'm using the same Gamsol for cleaning, or 
like a candle we have called Eco House. So the reason I like this brush is also it allows to lay paint on top. Soft brush is uh, good with this. If it was a bristle brush, for example, it would pick up all the paint. Trying to do soft touches. Use the same background color just to reshape it a little. I see a tiny bit of cool green in this rose. What you need to do sometimes when you carve around it helps to see shape better so I'm going to go around it a little more with dark greens that I have dark green bronze first hopefully you can see what I'm doing going back to this one so use a little bit of this green as transition yeah that worked well it's an interesting color it's I think it's called green gold or something like that so keep calling this petal the green thing After looking for a long time on this petal, I realized something that I'm missing this edge. That's why it doesn't work for me. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, you just don't see things when you look for a while and then you see it. So I think I lost a little bit of the purple, became more green than purple. So I'm going to do this purple thing again. I may not finish this video completely with all everything, but it gives an idea that painting roses takes some focus, but it's possible and they don't have to be perfect. They just can be the way you see it and every time you paint different. And that's the beauty of roses that there's no single person painting roses the same way. Everyone is different, everyone sees different shapes different uh, colors so even if you copy someone's roses they would still all not be the same the good part about it I want to find a good copy of one of the artists from Small Timon who painted very beautiful roses and copy his but I haven't some seen a good copies that I could copy easy so you don't see brush strokes and things like that soon there will have lots of flowers coming in my garden so I just hope this summer we'll be able to do more videos on flowers one of my favorite subjects to paint but I don't mind doing pet portraits nice practice but I prefer flowers you have so much more freedom with flowers I already think I've told that just I was impressed how I love to paint flowers after painting pet portraits for almost a month 
I had quite a few requests, so. so. I don't want this video too long, guys, eh? because not everyone likes to watch it long. People lose interest after some time. But if you like long videos, longer videos and see the whole process, you can always make a comment and tell me if you like to see the whole process and if it's of interest to you, then I'll try to do that. Tell the truth at this point, I put all the values and my main colors. I'll be just, I'll continue working on the shapes. Trying to see what shape there and just paint around it. So trying to go more with greens now. And I will emphasize greens as well more, but at this point I just want to do the most important ones. around roses then I'll put more colors and focus on greens as well okay so I'll finish this rose and I may stop video after that because it's clear now where I'm going with this and I will post the full painting later on my Instagram, so you can also have a look at Instagram for complete painting. Or maybe I will put it as a thumbnail for the video itself. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I'm going now back and forth uh, on, I think, the whole painting at this point, not just any particular flower or anything. And I may paint over it and may make it different, but um, now I notice something happening on my highlight. Actually, it's kind of pushed like this, so I want to do that. Because my light from the window changed, so I want to drag it a little. Purple there, well, this is purple. I'm going to use my other brush again. I lost my clean color, <laughs> but I'll bring it back. I can always put a thicker paint there. I can also put a darker paint, so it could look better. play with the vase a little more but 
Love is not the main object. Wait, I will do it later. Just to this point. I want to work on the roses more. Because the walls will stay the same way. There are some interesting reflections that I'm going to add later, like colors. Like maybe a little bit orange. Reflection from the other rows. So I still have roses down there as well. I don't see much of them in terms of the back shape and the front. There are some leaves here as well. So I'm going to use the same colors I used for the other roses. One is orange. The others, actually, third color introduced. It's a cream rose. at only some petals, not much, because I don't see much of the actual. At the same time I just do a very very light reflected light in the vase from these two roses. And of course some background color darker. Then I can see this little, little leaf goes on this side. So the second rose, um, what I did to the second rose? I think I painted over it, so I'm going to wipe. It's another reason why I like these panels. You can actually wipe very easy. The second rose, it's um, beige color, so I'm going to use uh, again Terra Rosa for the deepest area. Kind of grayish here. Greens. I'm not going to spend too much time, so I'm making like a very very light mix, orange and uh, yellow ochre. This rose has very very creamy light petals. I will cover around the same as uh, the other roses that are standing in the vase. I cover around these roses, but I have like little leaves there. Little leaf going there. And then I'll do background. And my, oh sorry, not background, um, tabletop at the back. And it's actually a mixture also of ultramarine blue and um, transparent red oxide. So these two roses I will work later. Again, they're not the main characters. They're not the brightest. Maybe this one is quite bright, but I'm just going to do some petals for it, that's all quite a deep 
almost like red color. So then I will go with a small brush later do cast shadow, more detail, tabletop, and all of that. And I think at this point I probably will stop my video. So it's already getting long and this kind of indicates the main values and shapes so that's how it's going to look I'm not going to change lots but majority of it is done now it will be just a little corrections and adjustments so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, write down the comments and I'll try to make more videos and try not to keep them too long. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.